Alright folks, welcome back to the Dawn's channel. I am the Dawn Father and I'm about to do a reaction now to the US military's 5 Elite Tier 1 units explained. Um, I'm assuming this is like the daddies, the creme de la creme, the special forces of the US military such as your Navy, SEALs, your Delta Force etc. The very best of the best. Um, and. The good thing is, I'm going to learn a little bit more about them. Um, maybe the, the types of equipment they use as well would be quite interesting as well um, to see. But anyway, this video uh, it hopefully explain enough and um, give us all enough information in it. Um, the link to the original video, as always, will be in the description section below. Um, and so will our Patreon account if you'd like a personalised video request and shout out, or simply join the channel and get your request through that way. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share, and put the bell on. Anyway. No more talking. Let's go. What's up everyone? General Discharge here. Today's video is going to be discussing the Tier 1 units of the United States military, also referred to as Special Mission Units. Tier 1 units are deployed to conduct classified missions and reconnaissance, black operations, counterterrorism, and unconventional warfare. These guys do stuff all around the world that we might never even know about. It's some pretty cool stuff if you think about it. There are currently five known Tier 1 Special Mission Units in the US military. Stick around and you'll find out what they are and a bit about each of them. If you want to learn more about the Tier 1 units, their missions, capabilities, comparisons, and much more, sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Interesting. Before we jump into it, make sure to take a moment and show us some love and support by liking our video and subscribing to our channel. Your support is our lifeblood. Do not hesitate to ask us questions in the comment section below. We check everything. The five tier one units are operationally controlled by JSOC, which stands for Joint Special Operations Command. JSOC defines a special mission unit as a generic term to represent a group of operations and support personnel from designated organizations that is task organized to perform highly classified activities. What that pretty much tells you is that all of the units we're about to tell you about operate in the shadows, performing missions and duties that may never be known by the public. So, what are the five tier one units? The five tier one units are Delta Force, DevGru, otherwise known as SEAL Team 6, the Regimental Reconnaissance Company, the 24th Special Tactics Squadron, and the Intelligence Support Activity. Let's give an overview of each of these units. Starting off with Delta Force, Delta Force is run by the United States Army. Yeah. You may also know it as CAG, the unit, 1st Special Forces Operational Detachment Delta, or ACE. Established on November 21st, 1977, Delta Force has participated in several key missions since its inception and has played a major role in complex, classified, and dangerous counterterrorism missions. They execute raids, national intervention missions, capturing or eliminating high-value targets, intelligence gathering, and unconventional warfare. They recruit from all branches of the U.S. military, both from soft and conventional forces, but a majority of their personnel started from SF or the Rangers. This means you will most likely have to spend years in a Tier 2 unit before you find yourself in Delta Force. Its selection process is right. one of the toughest ones out there, having a high attrition rate. And you have to think, that attrition rate is high amongst mostly those who have already proven themselves to the soft community. Food for thought. Now let's move on to Dev Group. Best of the best. Dev Group is short for Development Group. While it's not officially called SEAL Team 6, this is what it's commonly known as. Fun fact, it was called SEAL Team 6 because at the time it was stood up, there were only two SEAL teams, and they wanted to have the Soviets thinking there were actually six of them. DevGru is run by the United States Navy. Like Delta Force, DevGru also participates in covert, high-stakes missions. Almost everyone knows that SEAL Team 6 was responsible for Operation Neptune Spear, where they neutralized Osama bin Laden. While DevGru's full mission may be classified, it can be inferred that they perform in areas such as counterterrorism, hostage rescue, special reconnaissance, direct action, counterproliferation of WMDs, and much more. Their selection process is known as Green Team, 
and their operators are selected from SEAL teams. Some select Navy EOD and Navy SARCs can also do some cool guy stuff with them. Support elements for Dev Group can be pulled from conventional Navy units as well. Moving on to the U.S. Army Rangers Regimental Reconnaissance Company. The RRC was formed in October 1984, and was first called the Regimental Reconnaissance Detachment, gathering intelligence for the 75th Ranger Regiment. Speci At this point, um, I know the British SAS, SPS um, were like the, the two main ones, but there was uh, a regiment added, the Special Reconnaissance Regiment, so I'm, I'm assuming it's very similar to this one here. Um, and their roles would probably be pretty similar, but let's see what they have to say. But I know that that was something that was added uh, maybe in the last 15 uh, years or so. Specializing in special reconnaissance, the RRC is believed to be the reconnaissance and intelligence gathering go-to for JSOC. JSOC most likely had RRC join them because of how good they are at what they do. Close target reconnaissance and advanced force operations. The RRC's three primary tasks are active reconnaissance, surveillance, and direct action. Like any operator is trained to do, they also conduct raids, ambushes, patrols, and are trained in demolitions, direct airstrikes, and much more. The selection process for this is also grueling. Did you know General Discharge has a YouTube membership? We have three different levels of perks, each with some pretty cool stuff. You can join with the link in the description, or by the join button next to the subscribe button and on our homepage. What do you gotta lose? Join today. Now back to the video. And they pull from the 75th Ranger Regiment. The attrition rate is high, with a fraction of those applying getting selected for the Operator Training Course, which brings them up to speed for the duties of RRC. It is one of the heaviest deployed elements of the 75th Ranger Regiment. Now on to the 24th Special Tactics Squadron. This unit is the Air Force's contribution to JSOC. Made up of Air Force PJs, CCTs, Special Recon, TACPs, and the like, this unit offers its support to the other Tier 1 units. Their operators augment and are embedded in the other Tier 1 units. For example, DevGru often takes PJs for their combat medic roles, and CCTs for their subject matter expertise on JTAC responsibilities. All 24th STS members are trained in counterterrorism, direct action, hostage rescue, counterinsurgency, special reconnaissance, and much more. Not only do 24th STS operators know how to do their own organic job, they also receive training to be up to speed with whatever unit they wind up embedding with. A CCT in the 24th STS can find themselves working with Delta Force on one deployment in their career, and another one with DevGru. This means that they are a jack of all trades, having to adapt and learn right. what each unit does in their own unique way. And last but not least, yeah. the intelligence support activity. The ISA is also run by the United States Army. It is arguably the most secretive out of all of the Tier 1 units. This entity goes by several different names, such as Task Force Orange, The Activity, Gray Fox, or the Office of Military Support. It provides JSOC the intelligence it needs, through various means, to support special operations. The two main ways it gathers its intelligence is by human intelligence and signals intelligence. While gathering intelligence is its bread and butter, this unit has started to adapt to a more combative element as well. Many of its operatives are trained in direct action, hostage rescue, close quarters combat, infiltration techniques, and much more. They pull operatives from other units, such as Delta Force, to embed with them, meaning they have world-class operators at their fingertips. And there you go. You now have a general idea of all five of JSOC's Tier 1 Special Missions units. You know a bit of what they do, how they do it, and who makes up each unit. While you may know more than the average person about these units, the public will most likely never know what exactly these no. units have all done, both in the past, present, and future. If you're interested in finding yourself in one of these elite units, you're most likely going to have to spend time in a tier 2 soft unit first. So if your intentions are to be in one of these units, you're going to need patience, as well as to prove yourself first. With that said, we've done videos covering each of these units more in depth than we did in this video. We've compared Delta Force vs. DevGru, which we highly recommend you go watch, as well as individual videos on the other three units. The playlist for these will be in the description below. Well, that is the down and dirty of the Tier 1 units of the United States military. If you learned something from this video, make sure to give us a like and subscribe to our channel. As always, thank you for watching.
Do you even want to be here? A big shout out to all of our YouTube members and our patrons over at our Patreon. Thank you all so much for taking the extra step in supporting our channel. It is much appreciated. If you'd like to be featured on a general discharge video, that's it, just going through the tiers of their patrons and channel members, etc. There, a uh, good vi video, quite a lot of information to take in. All of them, uh, the groups, the tier one elite groups, having similar abilities um, for what they can fall back on, such as the, I wouldn't say basic soldier, and it's still a very high level of soldiering, soldiering, but being able to carry out normal soldiering duties as such. Um, I was obviously interested to hear um, the PJs, that's the para rescue jumpers, um, helping out with the sort of um, medic kind of stuff. Uh, they are absolutely incredible. Their knowledge um, and their experience and their training is so incredible for all different types of terrains, um, weather conditions, all different types of things and how to, to rescue people in the, those environments. Um, so that's just incredible. I was actually quite interested to hear about the Delta Force kind of, I wouldn't say selection process, but you, the experience required before you can even get into Delta Force, obviously tier, tier 1, you have to be in like tier 2. Um, which is like I think they said like your your Rangers or even like some other sort of special forces uh, tier two unit uh, prove yourself there and obviously there's, there's a, I'd imagine there's a grueling selection phase to get into the Delta Force uh, getting through the Delta Force selection and then going through all the training that it requires to be a, a Delta Force operative uh, to high standards so. <laughs> As they said in the video, to get into any of these roles requires a huge amount of training. Uh, <laughs> you, you're not just a normal soldier, you're the best of the best. Uh, you're not going to be just rocking up after a year and getting special forces. You're probably going to have to have operational tours under your belt beforehand. You're probably going to have to have been in a regiment of, of some description, like infantry type regiment if you're going Delta Force. Um, the SEAL Team 6, um, I'm imagining that's coming from more like, you're going from like your Marines and then you're going into the, the, the Navy SEALs, then you're, you're into the SEAL Team 6 or Dev Crew is what they call it. Um, this is years of experience, years of doing the job. But not only that, you're 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 already shining in each and one of, and each and every one of these um, roles before you even go there. You know yourself. People have already recommended you go to the next stage or whatever. So there's people backing you, and also you need to you need to have a bit of savvy. This isn't just mental drive and determination that gets through this. These are highly intelligent operatives, very skilled at what they do. Um, will and desire will only get you so far. Um, you need to have a brain as well. As I said, these are smart guys. Um, it's not just gun ho, gun ho. Rob, if I'm really, really fit and I'm really, really determined, I can do it. Seventy percent right. Um, maybe less uh, than that. Actually, uh, they need to be smart. They need to be showing signs of being the best in their platoons, best in their companies, one of the best in their regiments before they can even think about going to these next stages. It is that hard. Um, I know Delta Force. I've actually heard stories when I was in, but obviously we've had. We have the special air service, which would be the common, like, um, British Army. They got a special air service. The SAS um, would be more uh, para uh, parachute regiment type um, people that would be more likely to to go down the the, the SAS uh, role, but. That being said, there is actually, like Delta Force, they actually are recruiting from different parts of the army, different parts of the the, the military as well. It's not just uh, or infantry or parachute regiment. There is people um, that go on to be able to get into the SAS from different areas within the military. And likewise with the SBS, which is a special boat service, more than likely, more, more often than not, this is going to be guys that have came from like a marines the royal marines background uh, and, and to get into the parachute regiment of the marines this in itself is very difficult and it takes a couple of years of training to be the finished article before you're even showing signs of being one of the best of them so you're taking the best from something that's already 
a, a elite but not tier one elite as they've called it in this. You're already kind of elite or specialist trained if you're parachute regiment, if you're Royal Marines. So likewise, if you're a Navy SEAL or a, Mar a US Marine or um, an Army Ranger over there, you're already pretty good at your job. Um, but you have to be the best of that before you can even go. And then, as they've said, the fallout rate um, is incredibly high. It's not meant to be easy. It's meant to be tough. You're looking for the best guys. You're not looking for people that, once they struggle, um, that they're giving up. These guys don't give in. They don't give in. <laughs> they're just incredible. I've got nothing but my maximum respect. And um, obviously, uh, I've seen quite a lot of videos on this. I've seen sort of different videos of stuff that they've done on operational tours, read stories about different rescues and stuff that they've done. I watch videos now of different rescues that were done, whether or not it was para rescue or if it was like a sort of Navy SEALs type, uh, dev, dev group type rescue where you've got to go in and actually um, fight the enemy in order to rescue one of your, your comrades in a, a, a hostage sort of environment. Um, so all in all, as I say, they've got my absolute respect and I'm in awe of them. Uh, and it's great hearing the stories, of course, as the video says, we as general public now won't even hear a, a small percentage about what they get up to. The, the simple fact is, it's to to keep them right, keep them safe. Um, you can't be known who these guys are. They're doing jobs that we simply can't do. Um, and if everything was public about what they did, it would actually harm them from being able to carry out their job uh, in the, 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 the best possible fashion. Uh, and plus, some of the stories, some of the things that they're going to have to do, some of the things they're going to have to see, normal people simply couldn't handle these stories. Um, these are tough cookies, uh, these folk, and it's a need to know basis. We don't need to know either. So, at the end of the day, as I say, I think it's absolutely incredible. I loved hearing about the different uh, groups. Some of them are still, even because it's uh, like everything in the military, everything in the military is like abbreviated to different, if you're doing any sort of training it's abbreviated down into like fucking different letters to break up what sort of things you're doing, different groups are abbreviated down and it's all letters and they've usually got like um, a name like say CLAP, which is if you're like, this, this, this is just a simple one, like if you're doing um, radio procedure in the army it would have been under the the abbreviation CLAP, if you're given a, a, a or you're given an order, sorry, clear, loud, as an order and with pauses, that's your correct radio procedure so people can hear you correctly, you can get the message across and um, everyone can hear it basically. So just that's an example of so many different things so that's why I struggled with some of them there because you're quickly looking at it's only touching on it and um, all the different groups and stuff and some of them I've never heard of so that was why but anyway really enjoyed that video I hope you did as well uh, possibly do Delta Force versus Dev Group which is of course what they said uh, SEAL Team 6 um, which was only a couple of teams but obviously during the Cold War they, let, they wanted the Soviets to think that maybe it was more than what they had um, a bit of propaganda type stuff going on there uh, in order to deter them uh, or encouraging them to stop them to stop them from being encouraged by uh, maybe thinking they were a little weaker than what they actually were or or, or a little weaker or sorry making them feel like a little bit more powerful than what they actually were I should say I can barely speak here right now but anyway really enjoyed the video the link to the original video as always will be in the description section below if you want to check it out and as I said I'll probably cover that one Delta Force versus Dev Group in the UK we have something similar here um, comparisons people always compare different special uh, forces branches uh, and the two that I mentioned the SAS and the SBS of course the naval side of things the SBS and the army side of things the SAS there's a a little bit of friendly rivalry between them which is always healthy it's always going to drive the standards uh, and, and improve the quality of the two branches because they want to outdo each other they want to always be better than the other one and um, that's just normal and um, to compete and um, in that sort of sense of it but anyway don't forget to subscribe like comment and share and put the bell on thanks very very much for watching it's greatly appreciated and stay tuned for more military type videos coming soon thanks very much and i'll see you all soon goodbye